Hello! And welcome back into VR, or in this case, PC VR. Something I don't often delve into. But uh, some of you know, I spent best part of the day putting a little Wi-Fi 6 network together and optimising it for the Quest 2 and 3. And I thought I'd try out some productivity apps from my NVIDIA graphics card laptop thing with uh, the Quest headset on. So, um, TLDR, yeah, they're all still pish. Um, stick to standalone headsets, that's that's where you should be. Um, Blender XR support is rubbish. Um, Blender XR Freebird um, feels good, admittedly, but uh, it's very primitive and buggy as all hell. Uh, biggest disappointment was Adobe Medium, which I used to use. So the voxel-based sculpting in VR. Um, and it's getting more and more difficult to run. Um, sort of legacy support and that sort of thing. And apparently it's, its performance is tanked. None of that's to do with the Wi-Fi 6 or anything. That's just, thanks a lot Adobe. Don't bother supporting these things that are actually any good. Um, so yeah. Um, productivity, um, PC VR, meh. However, seriously, I'm plugged in. The games all work great. Um, got that old alien game I'm very fond of. Um, um, can't remember the one, but uh, the one with the the mother VR mod, it works fine. Um, X plane with a bit of tweaking, sort of does stuff. That's all right. Uh, can't remember what else I tried, but uh, the main thing was. Oh, um, X-Wing Alliance upgrade project. Um, but you kind of need to use the keyboard a lot for X-Wing Alliance and stuff like that. Best thing to do, get on and play Elite. Um, I never really got into Elite Dangerous, so I always wanted to sit down and do it properly. And I don't have a setup or a network and all that sort of stuff. And I don't play games very often either. <coughs> So, um, yeah, let's crack into this thing, run through the, the tutorial, get our license. Uh, yoink. Over here. We shall start. Character creation. We could obviously spend hours and hours and hours in here. Let, let's run through it quickly. Uh, body type. Male. Female. Mail again. Okay, those are our options. See how old this game is. Couldn't get away with it these days. Um, helmet, huh? Helmet. Uh, emergencies only. There we go. <coughs> what else do we have? Complexion. Okay. Ah, yes, we're very diverse, aren't we? And some more. Any chance of an old white guy? Hey, old white guy. Uh, maybe not that old one. There we go. Uh, give me a nice scar, I think. Just because I've got a scar doesn't mean I'm a villain. 2024, you know. Okay, uh, um, I'm not going to see any of these, we'll be in the cockpit. I'm sure it's great fun, but uh, maybe I wear, yes, yeah, so we get some glasses. Apparently not, maybe I have to earn or purchase them or something. Uh, let us continue getting and play the game. I have already typed in my commander name. Uh, very basic setup here, I don't have a hot ass or anything, um, the headset is wireless, but I'm playing with a regular gamepad at the moment, let's see if it's worth investigating in. I haven't set up voice recognition or anything either, I'm Scottish, I haven't got voice recognition set up in Windows anyway, I'd have to teach it, and um, yeah, fuck that noise. I have seen it in other videos, and it is quite good, um, but you can also play... Uh, elite reasonably well by looking at the 
panels you're interested in and using the joypad. So we'll do that just now. Commander Jizz Hands. I think we're ready to start. Hey, I'm in a spaceship. Wait, Welcome someone. to Morton Dock. Uh, make yourself comfortable while we finish some preliminary ship checks. My name's Theo Acosta, and I'll be running your Pilots Federation evaluation. Most pilots assigned to me earn their license, so as long as you follow my instructions, you'll be a commander in no time. You sound like a bit of an Imperial oh, and, to me. Uh, before you ask, I may sound like an Imperial, but uh, I'm actually from an independent system. Today we'll be covering the basics of flight control, combat, and frame shift drive use. This Sidewinder has been installed with a specialized computer that'll take control at certain points. Mostly you'll follow a series of objectives to guide your actions. These are shown in the info panel at the top right of the head-up display. Okay, you're good to go. Select auto launch from the options ahead of you when you're ready. Okay, so some of you that follow me on Facebook may realise this isn't my first attempt. Uh, my previous attempt at recording this got rudely interrupted by that dog that we're um, fostering or looking after or whatever it's been for the last six weeks. Um, he saw a cat. So I have done this bit. Um, I'll try and remember how it was the first time round. So I'm in a spaceship. Uh, a little sidewinder, I think. I used to know all about Elite back in the day, and certainly Elite 2, because that's the sort of vintage I am. But uh, I can't remember any of it now. Okay, let's take off. Ship release confirmed. Auto launch sequence underway. The beauty of auto launch is that you can relax and enjoy the view. Ooh, One of the ways that technology allows us to appreciate the good things in life. Other applicants are departing for their own evaluations, but this isn't a race. Day 17. Each of the coming stages can be completed at your own pace. So again, this has all been rendered on a little laptop. Little, um, razor blade, 15 inch thing with an NVIDIA card. And it's been recorded on the Quest 3. Hey. Oh look at that, it looks just like the Elite 2 Frontier logo. Aren't they clever? Remarkable, isn't it? For so long, humanity gazed up at the stars in wonder. We're not distracted by one of Earth's many wars. Yeah, now, right on, brother. We glide between them without a second thought. Bloody space happy. Ah, here we are. Your first task is to demonstrate basic ship movements. A ship's trajectory is primarily controlled by pitch, yaw, and roll. Perform each of these now. Again, I'm not using a physical stick like these things. I'm going to have to ask you what it means. Uh, left stick pitch, right stick yaw, left stick roll. Let's do, do a barrel roll. Oh, I don't even feel very sim sick from that. And nose down. Review your current yeah. objective and complete the required action to continue. Yo. How do I do that again? That way. Good. Oh. Now increase your throttle to accelerate forwards. Now that isn't TIE Fighter. Keep reminding myself that. Uh, I know the throttle is on this thing. What's the key for it? Yeah, it's the key for it. Decrease the throttle to resume a stationary position. Your throttle can also be pulled back from zero to engage reverse thrust. As before, push the throttle in the opposite direction to cease moving. Inputs confirmed. Looks like you've got the hang of individual...
individual controls. Let's see if you can put them all together. Your next task is to guide your ship through a series of checkpoints. Head towards the course, following the target indicator. The course weaves through an orbital structure and is designed for the novice pilot. Well, that's good, because I'm a novice. Well, let's go, Mr. Driver. What I should do is get really impatient and approach it too fast and then crash into it and die. Maybe I'll try not to do that. Accelerate through the first checkpoint when you're ready to start. Fly through the center of the first checkpoint. You'll notice that they change color as you fly through them. This is not an X-Wing, this is not an X-Wing, this is not an X-Wing. Okay. And we're off. There's no time limit, so maintain a comfortable speed while you familiarize yourself with the controls. It's not an X-Wing, neither is it Superman 64. Just as well. And now I'll get overconfident and crash into something. Rolling and pitching together is the most efficient way of turning rapidly. Concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. Echo, echo, echo. Echo, echo. It's good practice to consider the angle and speed of your approach. See the blue marker beside the throttle gauge. This indicates the optimum turning speed. Still want to press the button to rotate like you do an X-Wing. Oh, right there, you get lost. Easy peasy. Tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Now this is Audrey. Uh -oh. Your ship's boost function greatly increases your speed, but use it wisely. Let's target. Success. That's the last checkpoint. The Sidewinder is an agile craft, and you handled it well. I hear the Sidewinder is the sensor display in the center of your dashboard. That's how old I am. This represents a nearby beacon, which you'll soon scan as part of your evaluation. Target the beacon before we continue. You're going to use your ship's data link scanner to analyze the beacon, but you need to deploy hard points first. Okay. I think that means these things up front. We're going to have a look at them for us. So up here, and I'm pressing deploy. Good. <laughs> Most external modules are installed on hardpoints, including weapons. Control is back with you. 
The beacon is relatively small, so you'll need to position yourself close to it. I wonder if it's reshielded. How close is Watch your speed here. We intend to scan the object, not become one with it. Thinks he's funny, doesn't he? You can scan the beacon now. Well done. The data link scanner is a versatile tool that connects with network interfaces and various data points. You need to move to another area of this star system to continue your assessment, pilot. Rather than travel for the next year using your thrusters, you can employ the ship's frame shift drive to increase your speed by a few orders of magnitude. First, ensure that the ship is correctly secured. Your landing gear, cargo scoop and hard points must all be retracted. Okay, so this down here tells me landing gear, cargo scoop are up. Um, hard points, that thing I deployed earlier. See one over there. Press the button to take him in. And then they go. When you're ready, throttle up and engage super cruise. So let's aim in the direction I want to go. Up there somewhere. <coughs> Excuse me. Very pretty. Ah, classic. And throttle up. Charging. Without entering super cruise, this assessment is going to take a Four, rather long three, time. Two, one, All readouts look good. You're now accelerating towards a velocity comparative to the that's, speed that's of light measured in C. Fluxing. Super cruise is used to navigate within a star system, allowing you to cover significant distances in minutes. Usually you'll retain control in Super Cruise, but on this occasion your ship's computer is following a preset path. Oh, I doubt I'll, I'll maintain control. I'm not very good at these this things. This is a good time to familiarise yourself with a couple of the cockpit panels available to you. In the top left of your HUD is the comms panel, which displays pilot communications and contacts across several channels. The top right yes, is your info panel. Entries here mostly relate to your ship's status, computer messages and events happening around you. Then. Ah, there we go. Welcome to light speed. Hmm. Velocity C. I like the sound of that. Isolation. Alien isolation. That's that other game I was thinking of. Watch the distance and speed markers on the dashboard. These are used to help you accurately disengage at your destination. Your next lesson will introduce the basics of combat. Several static and mobile targets will be provided around a decommissioned megaship. I think I'm we'll aiming for that small situation. information about weaponry and target tracking. And yes, you'll get to shoot those weapons you saw earlier. That's no space station. That's a moon. Let's have a look as it squeezes past us. Do I have control at turn? I do not. Astronomical bodies have a gravitational effect on the FSD, oh, no. reducing your ship's speed. The closer the body, the greater the effect. Nope, never there. And we're here. The frame ship drive is disengaged. Welcome to the combat zone. Before you start shooting, however, try analyzing the mega ship with a data link scanner. Okay, so hard points open again. Bum bum. Target. I need to be closer, I think. Nope, I'm in range, okay. Well done. It's often 
or worth scanning objects you're unfamiliar with to learn more about them. Next, you need to activate your weapons by cycling to a different fire group. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that easier. your weapons are now listed on your HUD. Fire yeah, groups allow you to manage your hard points efficiently. Let's begin the combat evaluation. Destroy several of the canisters. Canister. Target. Uh, we're going to be a bit closer. All weapons have an effective range, so you may need to move closer here. for navigating around large structures. Why not give them a try? Your cannon will automatically reload until the ammunition supply runs out. Meanwhile, your laser will fire until the capacitor is depleted, at which point it will need to recharge. Still. Okay, thrusting down a little bit. Die. challenge or not, shall we? An unmanned craft has arrived nearby. These drones are used by the Pilots' Federation as target practice, and they're quite harmless. To continue, bring the craft into your sights and open fire. Let's go, Mr. Driver. Good idea not to crash into this big spaceship thing. Target destroyed. Booyah! Nice work. You may have noticed that multi cannons are effective against unshielded targets. Another craft has arrived. This one is fitted with a shield generator. Helpfully, your burst laser is a thermal weapon which excels at stripping away a target shields. Okay, why can't I target you? I recommend targeting your opponent <coughs> during combat. Uh oh. Bring myself. Oh, 
Oh, that's not my target I'm looking at. That's my little light that tells me I'm recording. No wonder I'm going the wrong way. Yay! You consider me impressed. Your final target has dropped into the area. This time your opponent will fight back, but its damage capability has been greatly reduced. Your target will not react until it registers shield damage. Ah, ah going Engage the wrong way, going ready. the wrong way, don't crash. Uh. Whoa, don't crash. Okay. The mass lock indicator has gone out. When you are ready to travel light years in seconds, engage the FSD. Frameshift drive charging. Engaging. Sun. Okay, let's go point that somewhere else. Technology has made the task of leaping between star systems appear trivial. Never let the simplicity distract from the marvel humanity has achieved. Your next stop is Quello Station. This time we'll employ the Supercruise Assist module to guide your approach. Open the external interface panel to your left and select the navigation tab. Highlight the starport in the location list and then select Super Cruise Assist. It's the second option. With the destination selected, throttle up and aim towards your target. The compass to the left of the sensor display will help you orient yourself. Um, there's a big sun in the way. I don't really want to fly into the sun. Ah, bless it. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. What did you want me to do again? Uh, 
I feel like there was something else I was supposed to do. Good. Your ship is now bound for Quello Station. Ah, get up to speed, then. Let's take a moment to review the interface panels either side of your chair. Yes, let's. The external panel is primarily used to interact with the galaxy around you. For example, you can access maps, that one. display contracts, and review nearby objects. Meanwhile, the internal panel displays information about you and your ship. You can adjust module functions, check your records, and access the codex, among other things. New pilots often wonder what their first step into the galaxy should be. The pilot's handbook is a great source of help in this regard. It details a variety of professions and how to outfit your ship for them. The handbook also offers advice on various ship functions that aren't covered in this evaluation. You can find the pilot's handbook in the codex, accessible on the home screen via the internal interface panel. The trails hmm. moving around you are FSD wakes. Your ship is also emitting one. The position of each correlates with their respective sensor display icons. In a moment, we'll be going through the docking process. This will cover docking permissions and a standard landing pad approach. Nice. I don't imagine I'll be docking manually. Hoping they let me use a machine. And hey, here we go. Oh, Welcome to Corvo Station. This is the final stretch. You'll dock here shortly, but I'd like you to position your ship near the starport's access corridor first. Starports are the backbone of humanity's operations throughout inhabited space. They provide mission boards, the commodities market, a number of specialized contacts, and various ship facilities. Most pilot business is conducted via the starport services interface. I recommend familiarizing yourself with this screen when docked. I remember the music being better. Good. Ease off the throttle and hold position Ooh. here. Ease off the other oh, way. and try not to block the access corridor. Yes. If you block the corridor, I'm sure somebody will come out and smash into you and blow you up. We'll be using the docking computer for this landing. You can always dock manually in future, of course, but practice in a training simulation first. Whichever method you use, all ships must seek docking permission before approaching a landing pad. To request docking permission, open your external interface panel and select the Contacts tab. Then select Quello Station in the list, followed by Request Docking in the Information Panel. Docking permission authorized. Docking Whee! assist has been engaged. You've been assigned Landing Pad 3. The compass will point towards your designated pad. Ships need to be within 7.5 <laughs> kilometers of a starport for a docking request to be considered. The docking computer will now demonstrate a safe landing procedure. Let's review what it's doing. We'll see about that on the way here, won't we? Landing gear must be deployed. The related dashboard indicator lights up if this has been done. Landing gear deployed. In a moment, the sensor display will switch to the precision approach display. 
which helps you accurately set belly down on the landing pad. Congratulations, Commander. Your evaluation has been successful, and a license is being assigned to you as I speak. We just need to finalize your credentials. Enter the hangar to exit this evaluation. Sounds like a plan. It's time to blaze your own trail across the galaxy. The manner in which you do so is up to you. I think my work here is complete. Yep, this looks like where you buy your ship. So now I have 44 arcs, and the ship is tens of thousands of arcs. Looks like it went in an all rounder, sidewinder to start. However, let's call it a day for this recording at least. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. See you later.